Ayata, Apole Kete Atahada. Thank him for the light of his word. Thank him for the word that is having free course. Thank him for the word that is is making impact all over the world. Zika Palo Shatayata. Father, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I want us to put our hands together and let's just say welcome to our papa with a clap and a shout this morning. I want you to shout glory. We celebrate you, papa. We love you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, are you ready for the word? Lift your hands above your head. Two hands. Put them together with a joyful shout. Let's receive our Papa, Dr. Abel Damina. Glory. Somebody blessed in this place. Can I have a powerful amen? amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Heavenly Father, we rejoice. We rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory. Our hearts are filled with light. Our minds are ready to be illuminated with the truths that are in your world. Revelation knowledge flows like a flood. Whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. Your people are built up, equipped, edified, and Jesus is glorified. Sick bodies be healed. Sick bodies be healed. And we give you praise for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together as we say these words I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word, I do the word naturally. Therefore, today, I will understand the word of His grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Are we excited to fellowship in the light of God's word this morning? Go ahead, let's celebrate our fellowship in this house. <laughs> Glory! Amen! Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet smart self this morning. We want to welcome everybody, everybody watching by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of the social media community, brothers and sisters online. We want to welcome you to the service this morning. It's going to be an exciting adventure as we explore the riches of redemption revealed in the Holy Scriptures. We also want to ask all of you on social media to help us share the video. Share the video, tag some people, and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please, it's important. And every one of you, go to the YouTube channel, Abel Damina Ministries, and, and press the thumb. Press the thumb. I've been reliably informed that the more people pressing that thumb on YouTube, the more YouTube allows for more people to see the video. So you need to go there deliberately. Even if you want to stay on Facebook, just flip over to YouTube, look for Abel Damina, this present video, and touch the like. Just like it, subscribe, go back to Facebook if that's where you want to stay, or to Instagram if that's where you want to stay and watch the videos. But it's important for you to do that for us so that we can get this word to the ends of the earth. We also want to welcome the radio audience in Akwai Bomb State, wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice. We want you to know we love you. We're glad you're in the service. Get more people to hear this word. Invite a friend, a loved one, ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. We also want to welcome all the citizens in the campuses all over the world. Brothers and sisters around the world. Citizens, we love you. We're glad to have all of you in the service this morning. Glory to God. Can somebody shout Glory. All right, we concluded in the last service, which was the first service this morning, we concluded our teaching on how to love God on his own terms. And I'm beginning a series in this service that will run for a number of weeks on building your spiritual life. Building your spiritual life. Matthew chapter 28, verse number 18. Please pay attention. Matthew 28, verse number 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, 
teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, when he says, all authority is given unto me. Don't forget that what you call the church came from that instruction. What you call the church. The body of Christ began from that instruction. In Matthew chapter 16 from verse 13, where Jesus was with the disciples and he asked them in the coast of Caesarea Philippi, saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Next verse. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Next verse. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Next verse. And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Next verse. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So the church commenced from there, which means the background of this discussion or this conversation, we find it in Matthew 28, verse 18 and 19. All authority is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. It has to do with his death. If you backtrack a bit, you see that there was a conversation about his death, whether he was risen or not. Matthew 26, Matthew chapter 26 was where he was captured. Matthew chapter 27 was where he was crucified and buried. Matthew chapter 28 verse 1 will be the account of his resurrection. Some doubted it, some believed it, and then eventually... He now spoke to his disciples. Let me give you a key statement there. When you, say, when you say he said to them, he said to them. Oftentimes, in the way it is written, it's not like he just looked at them and said, all authority is given to me. It's more phrase like, he kept saying to them. He kept saying to them, which means that when you summarize what he taught them and the content of what he taught them, this is what he kept saying to them. That's what you call the logos, the logos. Logos is the message itself. When you mention logos, you won't quote scriptures, even though scriptures are in the background of a logos. Logos means this is the message eventually this is the eventual message that he taught them so he is teaching the scriptures and in the teaching of the scriptures this is the message he taught this is the message he taught all authority is given to me in heaven and on earth now if you go back to the Luke's account where the same account is recorded Luke chapter 24, verse 25 to 27. And he said unto them, O fools, slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory and beginning at Moses and all the prophets? He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Later on in verse 44, 45 to 48, he said to them, These are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. 
then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them thus it is written and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem and you are witnesses of these things. So look at the two things I mentioned. Number one, Matthew 28. All authority is given to me. Number two, Luke 24, according to the scriptures. Matthew 28, all authority in heaven and earth is given to me. Luke 24, according to the scriptures. So which means that everything that Jesus taught in his resurrection was according to to the scriptures now what was the issue the issue was that if he is the savior why did he die that was the issue with the disciples if you look at the conversation again Luke 24 21 please I beg you pay attention Luke 24 21 but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel and beside all this today is the third day since these things were done. Now these were the disciples on the way to Emmaus. They said we thought he was the one that would redeem Israel. If he is the one that will redeem Israel, why should he die? The truth is that many of us still have these same, you know, queries in our minds. If God be for us, who can be against us? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Nobody. When Jesus says yes, no one can say no. Hmm. They are like the guys on the way to Emmaus. They did not believe the scriptures. They did not understand the scriptures. So those queries are queries of lack of understanding because they thought, why will he die if he is the savior? If he is the I am, if he is the God almighty, why will he die? Why will ordinary men kill God? Why will he die if he really is the one? That was the query in their minds. In other words, they had an expectation of who the savior should be. They had a mindset as to who the Savior is going to be. And, uh, you know, he will come around, take up the kingdom, set up the kingdom. That was their mindset. You know, and um, uh, upstage Herod, you know, drive out Pilate and Caesar and then declare freedom and abundance for everybody. So, he did not kind of meet their expectations. Somehow, he disappointed their mindset concerning who the Savior should be. And we all have to be careful because we are actually forming God in our image, after our likeness. You know, we are forming God. You know, you can have, this is what God ought to be. You can have a mindset like that. This is if he is God. This is how he ought to be. And that's a whole lot of idol worship. An idol is what you created. God is the one who created you. You didn't get that. An idol is what you created. But God is the one who created you. So you mustn't create an idol in your heart about how God ought to be. They were stunned at the death of the Savior. Now, what did Jesus simply do to them? In the Luke's account of Luke 24, 25, he said to them, Fool, slow of heart to believe all that the scriptures have spoken. To believe. In other words, when he said the prophets, he is referring to the scriptures of the prophets. Ought not Christ in the scriptures of the prophets if you have read carefully, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? You know, till tomorrow, we still have believers who cannot see God, who cannot see Jesus as the God of the Old Testament. 
They say in the Old Testament, God was very powerful, all conquering. He's a man of war. He's the mighty God in battle. Jehovah is a mighty God in battle. Glory to his name. Who can battle with the Lord? <laughs> when he speaks, thunders roll. But Jesus is the other side of God. Gentle guy who allows anything to be. Jesus is the born again side of God. Jesus is God repented. <laughs> that, that's the way they think about God. But the truth is, if you think like that, you are one of the guys on the way to Emmaus. Something is wrong with your understanding. Look at what he did in Luke 24, 27. Beginning of Moses. Beginning of Moses. Are you still in the building? Any intelligent person starts reading a book or a letter. Where? At the beginning. The students who start reading their books at the middle are those who avoided lectures and want to read to pass exams. So they select where to read. Since they can't read everything because the time is short, Exam is next tomorrow. They only came back from holiday today. They went on vacation while lectures were going on. Now they want to crash into the exam. So they start selecting where to read. Alright? And then they are not good students. Any believer who reads the scriptures in a selected way and halfway is not that smart. So... Here on the road to Emmaus, Jesus began. He began where you should begin. Jesus began where you should begin. Beginning at Moses. That word beginning at Moses is double emphasis. It's like saying beginning at the beginning. Beginning at the beginning. Because Moses is the first writer of the scripture. Now, that phrase beginning is a Greek word for arche. Arche. A-R-C-H-E. Arche. Arche omai. Now, I have always told you that the scriptures are written in human language. We said what you call the word of God is human language. It doesn't mean human communication or philosophy. But the language is human language. And no matter how you try, the moment you miss it in language, you can't get the content of the information. And you know, language also has different shades in its grammar. When we mention Hebrew or Greek words, it's because there is a language in that communication. For example... A woman in Nigeria who is wearing these high heels. You know the high heels? I hope that's the right thing they call it. You know the high heels? Alright, so she's walking on the high heels. And then finally she gets into the... Oh, my legs are killing me. My legs are killing me. If you do not understand that communication, you will actually be thinking of a coffin. My legs are killing me is a communication. But it's not a generalized communication. It's a communication that is only known within a particular part of the world. My legs are killing me. What it means is the shoes, the shoes have, are hurting my legs. So what, what should she do? She takes them off. My legs are killing me. Now if you don't understand what she was saying, you will say stop negative confession. Stop negative confession. You shall have what you say. <laughs> but that's not a confession. That's a communication that only people of that circle 
understands what she is implying. Am I communicating at all? Okay, so when it comes to language, you must seek to understand the grammar or the communication. Otherwise, you will be flying to the bush when you should be on the road. That's where many people have problem when it comes to language. We know that Jesus is teaching from where? Huh? Old Testament or Genesis to Malachi. Which means that every time Jesus is teaching, every time Paul is teaching, what you should have before you is what? The Old Testament. Remember, you must sit where they sat when he was teaching and hear what they heard. When Jesus was teaching, they did not have Colossians or Galatians. They didn't even have the book of Matthew. All they had was Genesis to Malachi. So if he says, beginning, ake omo mosios. That means that Jesus began from Genesis. Now John chapter 1 verse 1 tells us, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God in the beginning same word Ake beginning at Moses in the beginning Ake verse 2 John 1 2 the same was in the beginning with God verse 3 all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made where in the beginning. Where is the beginning? Genesis. Remember I said when Jesus said all authority is given unto me in heaven and on earth. I said that was the logos. Logos is when you put everything together. This is what you have or what we can call the subject matter. Logos. The subject matter. Are you still here? Now. John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the Logos, or the message. Or can we say, in the beginning was the gospel. Huh? In the beginning was the gospel. In the beginning where? Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. So put it up, let's read together. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Everybody, we read like a mass choir. Let's go everybody, let the radio audience hear you want to go. In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning. So, in the beginning was the gospel. Huh? Hey? In the beginning was the gospel. What is the gospel in the beginning? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That is the gospel. Huh. Matthew 28, 18. Jesus was teaching from the Old Testament. Luke 24, 27. Beginning at Moses. Or can we say beginning at Genesis. Huh? So Jesus is teaching from the scriptures. He is teaching from Moses. Genesis 1 1, meaning that's where he started teaching from. So, what did you see in Genesis 1 1 and in Matthew 28 18 that is similar? What's the similarity between Genesis 1 1 and Matthew 28 18? Let me show you quickly. Huh? Heaven and earth. Look at it. Look, I mean, Matthew 28, verse, verse 18. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, Can we all read together the next line? One to go. All power is given unto me. Genesis 1 1. Let's read together like a mass choir. Genesis 1 1. One to go. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. What's, the, what's common between Genesis 1-1 1, 1 and Matthew 28-18? Heaven and earth. Very good. Keep that somewhere. It will come in handy in a bit. So, heaven and earth. Again, Jesus in teaching in Matthew 28, where was he teaching from? Genesis 1-1. So, when he said all authority 
in heaven and on earth is given to me. Can we say Genesis 1-1 is about me? Can we say that's what Jesus was saying? Genesis 1-1 is about me and for me. So Jesus is teaching from Genesis. Heaven and earth given to me, therefore, is the interpretation of what? All authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. That's the interpretation of what? Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Interpretation of, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Stay with me. If you are getting lost, speak in tongues. <laughs> yeah, because we're going to get into some... We're going to get into some exciting things in a few minutes. All right? Now, so in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The scriptures are written in such a format that what we have, what we call the Septuagint, is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible. The Septuagint. Now, the Septuagint lets us know that that word, archaic, in the Greek is the word for the very first letter of the Bible. Arche. That word is called reshit or bareshit. Reshit. R-E-S-H-I-T-H. -h, reshit. In the beginning. Or bareshit. B-A-R-E-S-H-I-T-H. Now, I want to show you what it means. In Genesis chapter 10 verse 10, put it up for me. Genesis chapter 10 verse 10. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech and Akkad and Kalne in the land of Shinar. The word and the beginning. Bereshit. Genesis 49.3. Genesis 49.3. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my mouth. My might and the beginning of my strength. The beginning of my strength. Bereshit. Bereshit is used for firstborn. Or it's used for what is the head. The head. Exodus 23.19. The word first fruit. 23.19. Exodus. The word first fruit. Then Exodus 34.26. Exodus 34, 26. The word first fruit. Bereshit. Leviticus 23, 10. We're doing exegesis on that. Leviticus 23, 10. The word first fruit. You have first fruit. You have first born. You have beginning of a kingdom or authority. Bereshit. Okay, now, because the word Bereshit or the word Reshit is from another Hebrew word Rosh, R-O-S-H, Rosh. Rosh means head. Something that is the head or headquarters of an organization. Rosh, head or headquarters of an organization. I hope you know that when I'm laying foundation for a particular series, this is how we go, right? You're used to that, right? So stay with me, stay with me. It will get clear in a few minutes. Now, Genesis chapter 2 verse 10. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. Take note of the word heads. Four heads. Four heads. Very critically, Genesis 3.15. Critically, Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head. Bereish it, thy head. And thou shalt bruise his heel. Now that's a critical one because that's the promise of the Messiah. So the word bereish it also means authority. So are you seeing that Jesus was teaching from Genesis 1-1? Bereshit Elohim barat. Etashamayim's letter aret. Bereshit authority. 
in heaven and on earth. So when in Matthew 28, 18, Jesus now said, all authority is given to me, that is beginning at Moses. Is it getting clear? Beginning at Moses, authority in heaven and on earth. Genesis 1, 1. Stay with me. Now, Paul explored, brother Paul, this word so well in just four verses for you to see the meaning of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Look at Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. Colossians chapter 1 verse number 15. Who is the head of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Talking about Jesus. Where do you have image? First mention. Genesis chapter 1 verse what? 26 to 28. Let us make man in our what? Image after our what? Likeness. And let them have dominion. Okay? Now, the image is the word acorn in the Greek. E-I-K-O-N. Acorn in the Greek. Image in the Hebrew is the word selem. Selem. In the Greek, acorn. In the Hebrew, selem. T-S-E-L-E-M. T-S-E-L-E-M. Selem. Genesis 1.26. Put it up for me again. Genesis 1.26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. <clears throat> and Jesus now says, I am the Bereshit. I am the the bearer sheet. Paul says he is the bearer sheet. So if he is the bearer sheet, that means he is that image. So that means Genesis 1 26 to 28 is about Jesus. Because Paul says in Colossians 1 15, Colossians 1 15, who is the image, the Acorn of the invisible God. Oh, brother Paul. This guy, brother Paul, man. The firstborn of every creature. Look at the play of words. Let me read it again. Who is, pay attention. Are you here? If you're sleeping now, sleep very well. So that you don't hear anything. So you won't quote half stuff. Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. Hmm. Talking about Jesus. He is the acorn. Image of the invisible God. Let's do some work on the word invisible. In the Greek is the word aeratos. A-O-R-A-T-O-S. A-O-R-A-T-O-S. Which you will find in Romans 1.20. Put it up. Romans chapter 1 verse 20. <clears throat> For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead. So that they are without excuse. Colossians 1.16. Colossians 1.16. We're looking at the word invisible. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. First Timothy 1.17. 1 First Timothy chapter 1 verse 17. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Hebrews 11.27. Hebrews 11.27. 
Hebrews 11, 27. By faith he forsook Egypt, talking about Moses, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. So he describes God. We are saying that Genesis 1, 1 mentions the beginning God created heaven and earth. Genesis 1, 26 God created man in his image after his likeness. And Jesus said, all authority is given to me. Jesus says, the scriptures are talking about me. Which ones? We will find out. Remember, I told you that when we, say, when we, say the, when we saw the word Bereshit, ba, ba, it had to do with firstborns. Colossians 1.15. Put it up again. Pay attention. Who is the image of the invisible? We have seen image. We have seen invisible God. The firstborn of every creature. The firstborn. The word prototokus in the Greek. Prototokus. The word pro means before. Before. Is that a shade of Bereshit? Huh? Before. Pro. Before. It's a shade of Bereshit. Okay? Then the word Tikos. Where you have to yield fruit. So, Prototokos is another word for first fruit. First fruit. In Luke chapter 2 verse 7, it's used for Jesus, the firstborn from Mary. Firstborn from Mary. Romans 8, 29. Put it up for me. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For whom he did for know, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Hebrews 1, 6. Hebrews 1, 6. And again, when he bring it in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. A lot of scriptures good for your health. Are you still here? So, if you call him the first begotten, it means he is the pro. It means he is before. Hebrews 11.28 Hebrews 11.28 through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborns should touch them. Firstborns, which refers to Egypt. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5. Lots of scriptures, good for your spiritual well-being. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. And the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, Washed us from our sins in his own blood. The first begotten from the dead. Referring to Jesus. So go back to Colossians 1, 15 and 16 again. Glory to God. Who is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of every creature. Next verse. For by him, pay attention, for by him, the image, the firstborn, the invisible. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created for him and by him. So when we say heaven, we simply mean invisible. Invisible. Let's slowly, slowly read. Slowly. Colossians 1, 17 and 18. Slowly. Let's read it. And everybody, I know you're writing. Let's read Colossians 1, 17 and 18 slowly and very loud. One, two, go. And he is before all things. And by him 
all things consist and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have the preeminence. So if he is before all things, that means we are going to read him in which book? Genesis. Verse 18. Who is the Ake, the beginning? Colossians 1.18. So can we agree that brother Paul explored the word Bereshit to the fullest? Huh? Image, firstborn, invisible, beginning. All, brother Paul explored all of that. Beginning, head, first, before. So Jesus is teaching from the Old Testament. But which book precisely? Genesis. So if he's the first harvest, the beginning of the harvest, if he's the image of God and the firstborn, that means we need to read Genesis closely. Closely. If you read Genesis again, chapter 1, you will discover that the concept in Genesis 1 are spiritual in nature. All the concepts. When it says, for example, Genesis 1, 1 and 2, put it up for me. Genesis 1, 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form to hua bohua and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Tohua bohua means chaos or nothing. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. It's not darkness that happens after 7 p.m. Somebody told me a joke. I don't know if, how serious that joke is. You know, that one preacher said that God say I am because God is AM. So every time you wake up in the morning, that is God, AM, AM. What about PM? When people refuse to humble themselves, ignorance will speak to them in public. <laughs> God is the AM. 6 a.m., God. 7 a.m., God. What about p.m.? Satan, eh? <laughs> when he says darkness, he's talking about spiritual darkness. That's why chapter 3 is not power holding. Okay? I mean verse 3. Light be. It's not nepa or power light be. It's not even the sun. The next statement is the spirit of God. Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said. So if the spirit moved before God said. Whatever God will be saying will be spiritual. Because if it is not spiritual there will be no need for spirit to move. Light be. That's spiritual. He wasn't referring to sun, moon, and stars. They were created afterwards. So in other words, the Bible opens up with the solution to sin and iniquity. That's how the Bible opens up. With the solution to sin and iniquity. The very first words of the Bible is where you find the solution. Solution to darkness. Solution to chaos. is light. Light be light was Genesis 1 11. Genesis 1 11. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And God said to the earth, that was without form and void. So everything we will be seeing afterwards will be found in the light. Listen carefully everybody, look at me. Moses is not writing a creation story. 
Moses is using creation as a parable to explain God's plan of salvation. Moses is not writing a creation story. Moses is using creation as a parable to explain God's salvation plan. So in the light, the work of the light of God in the earth that was without form and void. The work of the spirit of God in the earth that was without form and void will be in verse 11. The work of the spirit. Look at verse 11 now. Genesis 1, 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Bring forth, the Hebrew word tikos, yield the harvest after his kind, after his, put it up, after, after, after his, after his, you don't call plant his, you don't call plant his, so after his kind, he's talking about the man, Are you following? So it is after his kind. So which means the seed is the seed of God. The seed is the seed of God. So the first seed is what? Huh? No, use the terms they used. The first seed is the firstborn. The first seed is the beginning. The first seed is the first fruit. Firstborn, beginning, first fruit. So that means if Jesus is the bearer sheet, when he falls to the earth, he will bring forth fruit. Are we teaching good here? If Jesus is the bearer sheet, when he falls into the earth, he will bring forth fruit after his kind. So when he falls to the earth, which is death, he will bring forth fruit of his own kind because he is the beginning. He is the firstborn. He is the prototokos. So the work of salvation will be explained as a harvest. The work of salvation will be explained as a harvest. If that is it, then go to Genesis 3.15. Pay attention. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Which is the anchor text for all of redemption promises. That scripture we just read. We read head in Genesis 1.1. -1. Then another thing had happened. Sin had happened. Darkness. Then... Genesis 3.15 The seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. Which means the Savior will come as a seed and bring forth fruit after his kind. The Savior will come as a seed. So in the work of salvation, the Redeemer is going to be explained as the seed. Are you here? The Redeemer is going to be explained as the seed. He's going to be explained as the firstborn. He's going to be explained as the beginning. He's the seed. He's the firstborn. He's the beginning. That's the explanation of the Redeemer. So if I want to get maize or beans, I have to start with what I want to get. Eh? If I want to get maize, what do I start with? Maize. In what form? Seed form. 
So if God wants to mass produce sons on the earth, he has to start with what? A song. Maze. I start with what? Maze. If I want to have songs, I start with what? A song. And that song will come like a seed. Why like a seed? Because of harvest. So he comes as a seed, implying that agricultural principles will be used in explaining how God will harvest. Which means the seed, which is agricultural, will fall to the ground and die. Then upon germination, which is resurrection, will bring many sons to glory. Am I teaching good? Okay, stay with me because I'm going to go somewhere. You will love this in a few minutes. Just stay with me. Now, so how does God want to multiply himself on the earth? He says, let us make man in our own image. Can we say, let us make man in our own seed? Huh? In our image. Can he also be in our seed? Then he says, be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth and subdue it. Is that harvest? Uh, is that harvest? All right, all right. You don't subdue in a new thing. You only subdue when things have gone wrong. Subdue when things have gone out of hand. So Genesis 1, 26 to 28 is the redemptive plan of God. Genesis 1, 26 to 28 is the redemptive plan of God. He says, in that redemption is male and female. He created them. In the redemption plan of God, both male and female are part of God's redemption. Zebonda. So now, are you here? If you're on the same page, shout Glory. So in Matthew chapter 13, there's a parable called the parable of the sower. It's called the parable of the sower. Interestingly today, when we say so, the first thing Pentecostal charismatics think of is money. Sow a seed for a breakthrough. Sow a seed for the next level. Your seed will meet every need. No seed, no harvest. And if you are sowing, it is not coming. The clouds are not full. Push more seed. For if the clouds be full, they empty themselves. Any seed that does not pain you cannot move God. No pain, no gain. <laughs> oh, Pentecostal charismatics. Father, help us. Okay, remember, it's a parable. So let's see Jesus use a parable of sowing a seed. Then he gives four other parables using the same analogy. He says in Matthew 13 that if you don't understand this parable, how will you understand any other parable? Matthew 13, 34. Put it up. Let's go. Matthew 13, 34. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude where? In parables. And without a parable, Spake he not unto them, 35, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying, I will open my mouth where? In parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from when? The foundation of the world. That is Psalm 78 verse 2. Put it up. Psalm 78 was where Jesus was quoting from. Psalm 78 verse 2. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. 
That's where Matthew refers to. So there are two words. I will open my mouth and speak in proverbs or in parables. The word mashal, mashal. It means illustrations, parables, proverbs, illustrations. That is how prophets have spoken since the foundation of the world. Did you see that? Let, let's see it again. Matthew 13, 34, 35. Please, I beg you, pay attention. Matthew 13, 34, 35. Put it up, brother, quickly, quickly. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude where? In parables. And without a parable speaking not unto them. So, can we say that everything Jesus spoke in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were all parables? Because without a parable, he said nothing. So meaning everything he said was a parable. Look at 35 now. Pay attention. 13, 35. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things. Pay attention. Which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Question. What is the foundation of the world? Genesis. Which means the book of Genesis is a book of parables. The book of Genesis 1 is a chapter of parables. Genesis 1. A parable of God's work of salvation. A parable of God's work of salvation. That's why Jesus said, this is the chiefest of all parables. If you don't understand this parable, how will you understand all other teachings? Because a seed means you are beginning something new. A seed is the beginning of a new thing. So Genesis chapter 1 is God's plan of a new creation. Genesis chapter 1 is God's plan of a new creation. So it says here, everything from Genesis are illustrations. Now this will help us in this series. When we look at the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs is a book of illustrations. Using everyday examples to illustrate spiritual truths. So the spiritual truth in Genesis is what? Huh? No, what's the truth? Salvation and redemption. Can we also say that the truth in Genesis 1 is the new creation? Huh? Can we say salvation? Can we say it's redemption? Can we say it's the new creation? Can we say that the spiritual truth in Genesis 1 is the church? Yeah. Eh? Can we also say that the spiritual truth in Genesis 1 is being born again? Yeah. In other words, the book of Genesis 1 is a parable of God's plan of salvation. But why will Moses use parables? Why? Why? Moses... Why? <laughs> Moses, why will you use parables? Now you have confused many people who go to Genesis 1 to explain creation. Moses, why? Why? Moses, Moses, why? Why will Moses use parables? To write the book of Genesis. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Moses. Then the question I will ask is, why did Jesus use parables? Jesus, why? Jesus, why? Why do you use parables? Aya. Jesus used parables because Matthew 13, 11. 
Pay attention, church. Matthew 13, 11. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Next verse. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Next verse. Therefore, speak I to them in parables, because they see, they see him, see not. And hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. Next verse. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. Next verse. For this people's heart is wax gross. Their ears are dull of hearing. Their eyes, they have closed. Satan didn't close it for them. They have closed. Lest at any time... They should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. So parables are used for who? Those who do not believe. Parables are used for those who do not believe. Why then is Genesis a parable? Question. Who was Genesis written to? <laughs> Why is the book of Genesis a parable? Question. Who was the book of Genesis written to? It was written to Israel as a nation. Who fits this description? <laughs> How will you be like Moses? You brought them out of Egypt. You brought them out of oppression. You say to them, let me go for prayer cruise. <laughs> let me go for prayer cruise. Before you are back, they have created an idol and they are worshipping. Very fast guys. They say, pastor has gone too far. Let's get pastor Aaron. Do something about it. Are you not also a man of God? God no call you. Do something about it. Mose is gone. Give us something to worship. Aaron, prove your calling. <laughs> prove your anointing. By the time Moses is back, they have started worshipping idols. Exodus 32.9. Teaching good? Exodus 32.9. Put it up. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen these people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Stiff. It's not a neck that is not turning around. <laughs> Sit where they sat. Hear what they had. Stiff-necked means rebellious. Rebellious people. Rebellious what? Then Deuteronomy 32, 20. Deuteronomy. When we used to preach the other gospel, we used to call it, dethrone your enemies. <laughs> and he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation. Children in whom is no faith. They are children in whom is no faith. So if you were Moses, how will you communicate God's plan of redemption to these people? In parables. So Genesis 1 is a parable of Jesus. Why? Because of the state of their hearts. Hearing, they hear not. Seeing, they see not. So he uses what they know. Moses looked at them and said, okay, wait. 
You know about agriculture? Yes. How many of you are farmers? Wow. Okay, very good. Since you all are farmers and you know about agriculture, what I am trying to say to you is that since you know seed, you know seed? Seed. S-E-E-D. Seed. Okay. So when you put seed into the ground, what does it do? Israel said, it dies. Then, germinates. Then, brings fruit. How? After its kind. Okay. That's what God will do in his son. <laughs> Did you get that? Did you get that? The book of Genesis was Moses' teaching note to Israel in captivity. So in their captivity, Moses was teaching from Genesis 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to show them the promise of God's deliverance. But he can't say it direct because they will not understand. So he employed the use of parables, seed, beginning, firstborn, first fruit, light, darkness, to bring about the same message. I'm teaching you. To bring about the same message. So it's not a book of arguing with people on Facebook or Twitter on how long was the earth created. You are using the wrong book. Go and get science books. They will teach you about creation. Books on archaeology. They will help you to know how long has the earth been. Where has the earth been coming from? Science and archaeology. Arguing about creation is an intellectual debate. It is not the gospel. The gospel is not an intellectual debate. The gospel is a message of faith. They are different. The book of Genesis 1 is a book of the plan of God's salvation. So who is the sower? Huh? God himself. God is a sower. God sowed the seed of his son. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. Look at 11 as a round off. Look chapter 8 verse 11. Glory. Luke 8, 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is dollars. <laughs> the seed is British pounds. Naira mama. What is the seed? The word of God. The seed is the word of God. The seed is not money. The seed is the word of God. And the word of God is a person. In him was life. And the life was the light of man. And the word became flesh. So the seed is the word of God. And the word of God is a person. So when the seed fell to the ground. Who fell to the ground? The person. When the seed died, who died? The person. When the seed rose, who rose? The person. And in his resurrection, he brought persons after his kind. If I'm teaching good, shout, I hear, I hear. The earth is God's harvest field. And he has his son into the earth. The earth speaks of men. Heaven speaks of God. Heaven and earth. God in a man. Huh. God in a man is the birth of the new creation. So Genesis 1-1 is the announcement of the new creation. In the beginning. 
God created the union of God in a man, heaven and earth. The announcement of the new creation is no more a Jew, is no more a Gentile. It is God taking up residence in a man called the born again man, heaven and earth. Kabada. So Genesis 1 1 begins with God's plan of the new creation. Then, after he told you that God will live in a man, he now began to explain there was darkness, spiritual darkness, but the spirit moved. So when the spirit moved, God, by the power of the spirit, said, light be, and light was. What light? I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Kabadaya. So he begins to explain how God plans to produce the new creation. That is how Moses begins the book of Genesis. It's not a book to be arguing. So on which day was the moon and the star created? Go to science. Go to school. And God sows his son in our hearts. Last scripture. John 12, 24. Blessed? Blessed. Let's read together John 12, 24. Everybody in this church, as I get ready to pray for you, like a mass choir, I want to go. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abided alone. Stop. It abided. Stop. It abided. Stop. It abided. For God so loved the world that he gave his begotten only it abided except he falls to the ground and die it abided so john 3 16 is jesus in the incarnation but let's go one to go but if it die it bringeth forth much fruit Through death, Jesus has brought many sons to glory. The seed. The seed in Genesis 1, who was re announced in Genesis 3. The seed of the woman. Abraham in your seed. The seed of Abraham. Kabada. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to promise. Abraham, the heir of the world. How will Abraham be the heir of the world? Ask of me the hidden. I will give you for your inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for your possession. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That is how we possess the world by the preaching of the gospel. Glory to God. Glory to God. Are you seeing scriptures opening up? Are you understanding now? So Genesis introduces the plan of God's salvation. The seed of God. The seed that will produce sons to glory. Now, that's by way of introduction in building your spiritual life. We continue with this series. Blessed? Get on your feet this morning. That's all I got. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Shadow of Bahata. Turn to your neighbor and say, hey neighbor. I am one of them sons that has been brought to glory. Yeah, I'm a partaker of that glory. I'm not a Jew. I'm not a Gentile. I'm a new kind of humanity that never existed before. Yeah, that's me here. Royal priesthood. Chosen generation. Peculiar persons. Called out of darkness. Into his marvelous light. Where are the called out ones? Can we celebrate him with a shout? Glory to glory, glory, glory to God. The seed is the word of God. And the word of God is a person. What is his name? 
Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for light. Thank you for illumination. Thank you for insight. Thank you for understanding. Thank you that veils are falling. Your people are getting built up and equipped to shake this world with the message of Christ. We give you praise. Great grace is upon this house. Great grace is upon your life. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. I call you sufficient. You have all sufficiency. Say it three times. I have all sufficiency. Two more times. One more time. You have all sufficiency in all things. You abound unto every good work. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. I didn't hear that. Amen on a note of finality. Go ahead and give God some crazy celebration in this. Woo! Amen. Hey, listen, I'm going to be joining Mr. Michael Bush in a few minutes for Ask the Counselor now. But just before we do that, grab your honor offerings. We want to give in honor of Christ in his resurrected, resurrected walk, in his resurrection, in his finished walk. We want to make this word available to everyone all over the world. That's why we give. So we give intentionally and deliberately as co-laborers with God in the advancement of his kingdom and the work of his kingdom on the earth. I'd like you to lift up your offerings, everybody, your honor offering. Online community, grab yours too. And those on radio, Mr. Michael Bush will read the accounts for you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the privilege to give. We give in faith. We give with joy. Our offerings are a sweet smell before you. And we rejoice that we have the privilege of advancing your kingdom on the earth. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Anywhere on the pulpit, you drop your offerings. The ushers will direct you. And we'll be joining Mr. Michael Bush in three, four minutes or so. Hit the music. Let's do it as we worship. Glory to God. Praise him. 
and bless his name forever. One more time, I lift your voice and praise him. Praise him. He's worthy. He's worthy. Because that is our nature. When we are giving, we are giving as he gives. Hallelujah. And so I want you to take that joyful offering and that kingdom investment joyfully because we are going to give again. Take it with joy and take it with delight. Take it in the spirit of honor respect to the one who died and rose again for our justification. Take that good offering and your kingdom investment, please, as you come out, kingdom investments in the basket and that worship offering right here. If you love and thank God. Give him thanks as you give. We are offering to God and say something. Every time we offer, we say something in respect and in honor, in acknowledgement of what he has done for us. And so, Father, this moment we thank you because we are conscious that everything, all that we are, all that we have, everything, is from you, through you, and to you. Nothing about us. We and all that we have belongs to you. And so this offering is for the work. Preaching the gospel, making Jesus known all over the world. And we thank you for the privilege you have given us to do this. And we thank you because you bless us. We are blessed. You have supplied all our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you for your blessing. In Jesus' precious name, let the believers shout, Amen! amen. Hallelujah! Joyfully come and drop the offerings Woo. and the investment. Supernatural is natural to me. The supernatural is real to me. The supernatural is real to me. Say, natural is natural to me. Yeah.
love, rejoice. I'm feeling. I pray. Professor, walk in love. I rejoice. I'm feeling. I pray. Professor, walk in love. I rejoice. Seated, ask the counselor starts now. Bank details account name is Power City International. The two banks, UBA is number one, 139 26 465. 139 26 465. That is for UBA account name, Power City International. The same account name for Zenith 10 12 36 59 12. 10 12 36 59 12. Okay, I, I don't know, just discussing backstage with producer Pastor IJ Quera, and we're looking at the possibility of squeezing in a couple of calls since now it's just Sunday, Sunday that we come here live. So, against that background, we're going to throw open a window, about a five minute window. You can squeeze in your calls, and once the producer gesticulates to me, You'll be right on air. So calls, if you're doing that from outside Nigeria, it's plus 234. Otherwise, simply 0806 800 9939. You want to squeeze in a couple of text messages, you also would avail yourself of plus 234. If you're doing that from outside Nigeria, otherwise it's 0703 691 8642. Or you just send an email or two to ask the counselor now at gmail.com. For sponsorship, for partnership, for support, just with a view to keeping our program on air, just avail yourself of plus two, three, four. Again, if you're doing from outside Nigeria, that's the program hotline. Otherwise, it's simply 0803 275 or you send an email or two to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Dr. there, of course, is D.R. My name is Michael Bush. My producer is Pastor I.J. Quer, as you already know. He works 24-7 uh, around the clock with a crop of fantastic young people, the production team. But all of that fell into nothing when our spiritual father appears on the scene. What applause is that? Okay, you know him. He's known globally, he's known internationally, he's known nationally, he's known locally. And it's somebody who does the work of Jesus like all of us should do. Help me welcome my spiritual father, your spiritual father, Global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina. The Intercontinental Mr. Bush. Global Baba. I miss you, man. I miss you more, Global Baba. You left me alone to I, go I, I, to I, Yeah, I saw you igniting the whole place, Global Baba. Yeah, I was looking for you. And, and the social media... It looks still... like you like that kind of thing. Global Baba, I yes, sure. I wanted us to go together, man. Yeah, Global Baba, you know I've been too ignited. <laughs> Your phone was just off. Yes, Global Baba, you know I've been too ignited. If I go there and get reignited, I can just explode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Global Baba... Um, the social media space. They were just waiting for you there. I, I think so. No, nobody else has been quoted from that event. But the moment you went there and came out, it looks like they, they, like they said me. some it things. It looks like they like me too much. Yeah, they, they, they are really fond of you. Yeah, you know? I think so. They even quoted that. Uh, that you know. I endorse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Global, but you even know. I think they have a problem with English. Absolutely. <laughs> That's just what I think. Because they said, I said mm. that Pastor Umoino is the greatest. A quiet bomb will ever have. Wow. I can't say such a thing. I said it's one of the greatest, just... which means there are other greatest. Mm. But you know, sometimes when people, <laughs> when people like you too much, yeah, sure. they just talk about you anyhow. Yes, you know, sure. I have learned to take that as a compliment. Anyway, you know, Global Baba, they are right to say what they want to say um, because, I mean, Pastor Moeno, um, they, they, they call him Golden Boy, it was his wife who gave him that name. Um, for him to even have the capacity, yep. the 
the good fortune to yeah. take you there. Yeah. Um, makes him one of the greatest, clearly. Yeah. And, and of course, to organize such an event, yeah, sure. man. I mean, they have Absolutely. people from all over Absolutely. the state. Absolutely. That whole place was packed yeah. with people renewing their mind for and three days. And they sat there for, from start from to finish every day. The first day, I thought it was going to be a two-hour event. Mm. We even got there two hours late. We sat there till 5.30 in the bomb hall, and everybody was seated. Mm. Teachings were going on, they were busy taking notes. And that was for three days. Every day people got there at 8, 9, and sat down till 5.30 p.m. in the evening. I mean, that's something to commend the, you know, Pastor Moino for. Global and, uh, Barber. For all that he has done for Global this, Barber. Uh, yes, the Intercontinental. And there's no way you not be part of that. You, I mean. No, you know, I like such things. Absolutely. I like such things, where people are are being empowered, mm. where people are re-engineered, where people are re-educated. Mm. I love to be part of such things. I know. Truly. I but do. I know that you love to be part of, uh, ask the council or more. Oh, sure. <laughs> that, <laughs> happens, that happens once in a while. Ask the councillor is almost it's all there. the time. Absolutely. So this so is the let's just pray and take off for safety. Let's pray together. Father, we rejoice and we thank you for Kwai Bomb State. We thank you for Nigeria. We thank you for your people all over the world that are open to the truth of the gospel. The gospel continually is being proclaimed. Men are raised, disciples are raised, believers are built up, ministers of the gospel are raised on a daily basis. And we pray for our political space as Nigeria transitions from one government to another. We rebuke violence. We rebuke confusion. Amen. We rebuke bloodshed. Amen. Satan, you will not overrun our cities. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that during this transition, there will be shifts. Things will move very smoothly from one government to another. Nigeria will experience a better day and a better, a better, a better leadership Amen. and better results, Amen. even in the years to come. Amen. And we give you praise for answered prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, global no, about the last time we're here live, we spent the night in Uyo, Nigeria, which is where we are. We're going to be sitting here from next. Hello, global Baba. Please kindly clarify this for me. Exodus. 34-7 amplified, and Numbers 14-8 amplified, seem to depict the word visiting, translated pakar, to mean visiting with friendly or hostile intent. In the amplified version, however, Global Baba, visiting is consistently equated with avenging and not cared for as we were taught. A. Could it be, Global Baba, that the character of God was not understood in full by amplified vision translators, hence the translation of Pakad as avenging? And B, would it be safe for us to continue using the amplified vision if it is indeed true that the judgment of the scriptures was wrong? Anonymous from you. Well, like I've always said, you, you know, in Bible teachings, we take time to explain scripture. So if Amplified use a different word, that's why it's safer we go to the original Hebrew and we just take it from their world and interpret it exactly the way it will be in our world. And that's why it's not just enough to have the Bible. God gave you a teacher. He gave you pastors to help you interpret and understand the scriptures. So that's why it's safe to stay with a teaching pastor and just be faithful there so you learn and learn and grow and get to a point where you understand why certain things are written the way they are written and why certain things are expressed the way they are expressed. Okay, Global Baba still from Uyo. Greetings, Global Baba, the Intercontinental Michael Bush. I mean, Mario, I'm, right, I'm writing from Uyo. I must confess, Global Baba, that you have transformed my life. God bless you, sir. Please, I have a question on the lake of fire. It was created after the fall of Adam or in Genesis creation, and even Genesis, global Baba, why? Since God never created the devil. Well, God never created the devil. God never created sin. Sin and the devil were man's, man's creation. So lake of fire is a judgment. Stop thinking of fire like gas. Stop thinking of fire like firewood. They are words used to explain judgment. So it's not talking about literal fire, where people will go and be burned with fire like physical fire will burn. They are figures of speech used to explain that there is judgment for Satan, there is judgment for sin, and there is judgment for all those who reject the love of God expressed in the person of Jesus Christ. Okay, Global Baba, let's make uh, progress. Still within Uyo, the capital city of Akwaibo, where this broad, broad, uh, broadcast is coming to you live from. 
Hello, my spiritual father, Global Baba, the intercontinental Mr. Michael Bush. Daddy, can God call a sinner to do ministry without them being born again first? Because this is what my neighbors are saying, and I've tried my best to let them know and see that the only call God has for all men is that they should come to repentance. Also, that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, but he refused to listen, Global Baba. So I need more understanding on this. Thank you so much. Joseph Achibo in Uyu, Nigeria. Well, Joseph, they will not listen because their minds are messed up. So what you do is you pray for them. There is nobody that is called to the ministry without being born again. It is salvation that you receive from Christ that now becomes the ministry that you carry out to others. You are saved to serve others with the purpose of God. So a man that is not born again doesn't have any ministry. Ministry begins with salvation. So stay with that truth. And if they are arguing, don't engage people for the purpose of arguing. Engage people for the purpose of helping them to see the light. And if they refuse to see the light, leave them and just take some time, pray for them. Maybe you are not the right person to help them see that light. God has a way of bringing the right people that will speak in the language they will understand and open up to the truth of the gospel. Global Baba. The Intercontinental. From Uyo in Akwaibum State to Ikorepene, Akwaibum State. Greetings, Global Baba, the Intercontinental Mr. Michael Bush. My name is Nsi Felix. I arrive from Ikorepene, Akwaibum State. I always tell people that it is wrong to pray for our enemies or wicked people around us to die. But they will always come up with Exodus 22:18. Please, Global Baba, explain that place for me and teach me how to overcome these people by convincing them with the truth. Well, again, if Jesus killed anybody, then God kills. If Jesus killed nobody, then God never kills. Jesus is the yardstick for defining the character of God. Because Jesus is God in human form to reveal to you at your level what God does and what God does not do. Which means that that scripture in Exodus, and I know it's so far not the witch to live you're looking at, is a context, and in that context, there's an explanation that is required. So my advice to you, instead of looking for simple, simple explanation, go and get the holistic teaching, the misunderstood God series. Sit down and listen to all of it. It will explain all of those scriptures to you and bring you to a place of total clarity. Okay, Baba from Nsi Felix in Ikorekpene to David, still from Ikorekpene. Daddy, please, what really causes sleep? or sleeping among believers? Is it that the Spirit of God is not in them or they don't cooperate for the Spirit to work out? Please give me clarity. I don't know which kind of sleep. <laughs> is it sleeping in the PM, not the AM? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what kind of sleep, but if you mean death, if you mean death, the reason why believers die physically is because this body is not meant to live forever. So in the death of Jesus, he paid for this body. There's a new body that will swallow this body. And that body becomes what we call the blessed hope. It becomes the completion of redemption. And that is the resurrection from the dead. Where mortality puts on immortality. So as long as Jesus tarries his coming, even me, if Jesus tarries too long, I won't be here. One of, the, one of, one of those days in the future... I will get tired of being here and I will make up my mind to go. And I will go. And other people will continue what we have started. So, you know, and as long as Jesus keeps tarrying, people will keep going to be with Jesus. That is, they will drop this body and be with Christ. So on the resurrection day, they will wear the other body and continue to still be with Christ. So it's because of mortality that people sleep. Okay. No, but what if it means like careless living? Um, why, for instance, um, if, if, it's referring, if it means sleep within the context of, for instance, uh, we are lazy, we're not hardworking, we're not okay. well, active. Okay, well, if people are lazy and not active, it's not because they are Christians, it's because they are human beings. Because lazy people, there are Christians who are lazy and there are non-Christians who are lazy. It is part of human nature. But it is left for a man to make up his mind what he wants to do in life and sit up and fast in his seatbelt and do something about impacting humanity. Okay, Global Baba, we'll continue with this last one from Ikorek Pne. Hello, Global Baba, Reverend Michael Bush. 
May God bless you for the clarity of the scriptures, my daddy. Please throw more light on First Peter 3, 3 to 4. He did young Peter in the corner. First Peter 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 to 4. Whose adorning let not be the outward adorning of plating the hair uh, and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man. So what Peter was saying is that a woman's focus should not just be about what she wears. It should be also devoting her time primarily to building her spiritual life. That should be more important than the physical. That's what Peter was emphasizing. He wasn't condemning plating hair. He wasn't condemning makeup. He wasn't even condemning doing your nails and all of that. But he's saying you will not do all of that at the detriment of your spiritual life. So as long as your spiritual life is growing, please groom yourself because holiness is beautiful. It's not ugly. Okay, Global Baba, I am leaving Ikorepene now. I'm heading to Eken, but I need to do that on route with you. So again, dear Global Baba and the Intercontinental Mr. Michael Bush, Daddy, I appreciate you for filling the earth with the knowledge of Christ. Please, sir. One, is it a sin for husband and wife to lust after each other? No, husband and wife don't lust after each other. Husband and wife gets attracted to each other okay but that word loss can also be used in a positive sense because the word loss can also mean desire so husband and wife can desire one another so husband and wife can lust after each other and it's not a sin two please sir you said that we don't need to confess our sins to god before he forgives us that we develop an unrighteous consciousness in doing that would this not make us suffer from guilty conscience? Because out of my own experience, it was when I confessed my sin to my church pastor and he prayed for me that the guilt of my sin left me and I began to have inner peace from that moment. Thank you. Anonymous, you know you? Well, the reason why you confess to your pastor is because you, in your mind somewhere, you believe that your pastor has the key to forgive you your sins. That's why you confess. It is the same thing like praying to an angel or praying through somebody. It means you have not yet understood that you and God have a relationship. You don't need a mediator. And the reason why you're having sin consciousness is because you don't know the word of God. If you spend time in the word of God, the word of God will renew your mind and free you from guilt and condemnation. Because there is therefore now no condemnation. Not because you pray, but because you are in Christ. But if you need prayer to be free from condemnation, it shows that you have limited knowledge. You don't have much knowledge. And if you grow in knowledge, you will save yourself and your pastor the stress of continual confession. Global Baba. The Intercontinental. You know, you know, Global Baba, I love you. You, know. <laughs> you will just finish the matter and drop one and then hand over back to me. Okay, Global Baba, let's go to Ekip now. Says, hello, my dear Global Baba and the Intercontinental Michael Bush. My name is Gift Ufort. I mean, naked, please, Daddy, I want to know more about laying of hands on the believer who has already believed in faith, whether they go out or not, or whether they go out, but the person believed that it is saved and what, in, and what inside of him will manifest in his life. Please, more clarity. I don't know. I don't understand that. Well, there is the ministry of laying on of hands, and the ministry of laying on of hands is done for ministry, for service, not for salvation. You don't need hands laid on you to be saved. You believe the gospel, you receive Christ. But to serve the purpose of God, to do ministry, the person training you steers up the deposit of God in you via the laying on of hands. And that is not done suddenly. That is done by somebody who has gotten to know you, train you, develop you over time. Then he can lay hands on you, steer up the gifts of God, and release you to maximize God's purpose for your life. Okay. No, but we, we've got to go. Producer just gesticulated that we have two small minutes to round off proceedings here. In those two minutes, I'll just read two prayer requests and then we go home. This one, anonymous location. Hello, my mentor, my dear Global Baba. Please pray for me. I have stolen faith. All medical treatment seems futile, hence my request. There is nothing God cannot do. More grace from Udeme Umoeka. Then this one, kindly, Daddy. Pray and command this rubbish of fibroid and pile to vamoose from my body by force, by fire, and the sickness will obey you. 
for my body to be free in Jesus' name. Amen. Like thunder. <laughs> Daddy, I'm only reading what they wrote. You know. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Fabroid and, uh, Fabroid and, and pile. Uh, pile. Vamoose. Amen. <laughs> Vamoose in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Lord, we pray for all those who are sick, those going through challenges, those going through trying times. We, de we declare an intervention of God. We declare that circumstances and situations are arranged for your, for your total freedom from those situations. Receive a miracle. Sick bodies be healed. Amen. God's healing power flows through your body from your head to the soles of your foot. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Producer Pastor I.J. Quera and uh, the production team join me, Michael Bush, in Uyo, Nigeria to bring on our father, our spiritual father, Global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina. The intercontinental Mr. Bush. Let's celebrate Mr. Bush again for serving us, even in this service. Once again, we want to thank all of you for giving us the opportunity to be a blessing, even in your lives. Continually, we look forward to spending time, bringing clarity, equipping you. And remember, tomorrow, 12 noon, GMT plus one every day. And every evening, 6 p.m., GMT plus one on all platforms, social media platforms, you know, uh, uh, Comfort FM in the evening every day. We have the word of God flowing forth every day. You don't want to miss all the opportunities to learn to grow and to be equipped with the truth of the gospel. We look forward to coming your way again tomorrow evening, tomorrow afternoon, and as we continue to teach you the word of God, enjoy the grace of God. Looking forward to seeing you again, and until then, be blessed. Goodbye from Uyo, Nigeria. Amen. We trust that you have been blessed by this message. To order the complete series of this message and all the messages by Dr. Abel Daminer, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.